Let me introduce our last and final speaker, Tuka Turunen. Uh, he's uh, heading the R&D department at CUTE. Please welcome Tuka. Thank you. My presentation is about uh, functional safety with Qt and Qt Safe Render. I provided a topic of, uh, of presentation about functional safety a year ago in the previous Qt World Summit in which we uh, looked at uh, quite deeply into some examples, reference architectures and specifications and standards, how to create functional safety systems. I will very briefly touch the same topics in the beginning, but the main point which I want to use adequate time in the presentation is to go uh, and look into the upcoming Qt Safe Render and how that is done and how that can be used in creating functional safety systems with Qt. But first, what is functional safety? Uh, the goal is simply to protect people from getting hurt. Uh, there are systems, means, mechanisms, uh, that are created for the sole purpose of keeping people safe. Uh, the extent of the systems needed are determined based on a likelihood of causing harm uh, to people, like injury or death. So the more there is possibilities of causing harm, the higher the needed safety integrity level is, and vice versa. And then based on the defined uh, usage of the thing that you are building and uh, this likelihood of causing harm you will reach uh, or basically you are given a level uh, that you need to fill and then uh, the higher the level the higher the re requirements uh, for the software hardware and other building blocks of the of the system are and then again the lower the level uh, it, then the, the more easy it is to create the system um, some examples of standards that um, that there are um, are shown in the picture. So IEC 61508 could be seen as the matter of of all the functional safety standards. All other standards are either uh, derived from it uh, or extend it uh, or directly based based on it. Um, so basically, when you are creating a system, you typically are doing it for some industry. There might be an industry-specific standard, like there is for medical or automotive, um, and many other industries. Um, then you look into that standard as well as then uh, typically the 61508. So you check those two, and then that's pretty much enough. Uh, in some areas, there might be a situation where there is no safety standard, and then basically the 61508 can be used as a framework for, uh, for addressing the functional safety. But that was a very quick summary into what, what is the presentation about, and now let's dive into what does it mean to create a certified system with Qt. So first of all, it's important to remember that it's always the complete system needs to be certified. Using pre-certified tools, components, parts, uh, real-time operating systems uh, help a lot in creating a new system. Um, it actually is almost, or it's very challenging if you start from scratch, if you would uh, would not have any of the certified building blocks. But even if all the building blocks that you have are certified, you still need to certify the end system, because it's only always the end system that matters. Um, and in doing so, it helps to identify that what is the safety critical functionality of the system. So, yes, the whole system is safety critical, yes, the whole system is certified, but not all the functionality of the system are related to safety. Some things are. For example, some indicator uh, if we take an example from automotive, typically uh, it's quite, uh, well, basically everybody sees that the airbag indication, that is airbag active or not, is very safety critical. There are many other examples uh, like that. So um, you need to isolate what it is that you want to, what you consider to be safety critical. Sometimes the standards might set the framework, sometimes the local legislation might set the framework into what is safety critical. But at the end of the day, it's basically you as a creator of a system that needs to be basically making your system safe. And then doing so, you isolate the safety critical functionality from the other functionality. Then uh, you can uh, use Qt freely uh, in the other functionality without any certification requirements to Qt uh, framework libraries. Um, 
and then the safe trigger UI, you can render with the Qt safe render. The suitable means of separation are depending on the required level. Uh, sometimes simple process level separation is enough. Sometimes you need more, uh, more separation from the system. And, and it's also very important to make sure that the part that is uh, not defined safety critical really cannot interfere. So you also need to make sure that that is done in good quality. Even though it's not running any safety function, you need to make sure that it does not interfere the safety function from operating. So let's look at a couple of architectures which, uh, um, of, of how a certified system can, can be created. These are, of course, uh, simplifications, but uh, they give an outline of, of how the system is composed. In this example, uh, hardware on, on bottom, then we are using a real-time operating system, which has been, uh, which is safety critical and therefore subject to certification. Uh, then we have a basically boundary between the safety critical functionality and the other functionality. Basically process level separation provided by the uh, real-time operating system. On the safety critical side, we are running Qt safe renderer and then the safe UI and then on the other functionality, we run uh, normal Qt, those modules that you need, and then the main UI of the system created with Qt Quick. There, of course, can be, and there are such systems that have no safety critical UI. And those, uh, an example of that could be, for example, a system where, where you are communicating, you are controlling something. And basically, the, the critical part might be that the control interface is not giving a faulty command, but the actual UI doesn't contain any. So that kind of safety critical systems, of course, exist and can be created. There, uh, you do not need to have a, any UI that is safety critical. But quite often, there is need to have some indicator, some some text, some signal, something for the user. And this is where the Qt safe renderer comes comes to help. Another example of an architecture is using hypervisor for separation. Basic principle is similar, but now we have a type 1 hypervisor. Type 1 basically means this kind of bare metal hypervisor, which is just copying the electronics for each of the so operating systems, so that the real-time operating system here and the regular operating system, for example Linux here, both see that they would be running natively on, on the hardware and the virtualization layer is doing the separation. Uh, on the real-time operating system side, it's similar as before. Now, basically, the whole real-time operating system is in the safe critical part. You could still have, and often it might be beneficial, you, you might want to have also in the real-time operating system domain some part of the UI that is not safety critical and some part that is. Then in that case, you would, could, for example, run another instance of Qt on top of that, and then the safe render, which would basically look like the previous picture shown on top of this. Uh, but in this case, there is no safety, uh, no other UI uh, running on the real-time operating system except the safety critical one, and then the um, uh, main UI is running on top of on top of the Linux operating system. Then a third uh, example of the um, architecture it is uh, in principle similar to the hypervisor, but here we have actual physical electronics that are separated. So we don't have a hypervisor in between, we have two different CPUs. Uh, one CPU to run the real-time operating system and the safety critical functionality, and the other CPU to run, uh, run the regular functionality of the system. And um, depending again how what the safety UI is, this CPU can be, of course, for example, uh, much, much uh, less powerful than, than the one that's Linux. It might be even just, just, just a microcontroller or similar easily. And here we probably need more processing power if it does graphics and advanced functionality. So that was a quick overview of a um, of couple of architectures. Now let's dive into the Qt safe render. An overview. Uh, we, the Qt safe render, as I mentioned earlier, is a, is a work in progress that we are uh, aiming to get uh, ready for certification by the end of this year, and then the certification hopefully early, early in the beginning of next year, depending on how much things we then have to fix uh, in the certification process. Functionality device, there's a demo, I, I will show a demo later, there was also a demo on our stand, it starts to be there 
pretty much so. It's, it's basically the paperwork and other things that are needed by the testing. So two components. Um, on the top, you, you, you see a screenshot of the tooling. Um, and then here is a picture of the safe render operating on the target hardware. So the tooling component hooks into our regular uh, Qt Quick Designer or Qt 3D Studio uh, and extracts part of, of the design from, from there, puts into the parameter file which the renderer component then shows. I have a couple of more slides that go into a bit more detail how does it done. We have uh, done integration to two different operating systems so far, QNX and Integrity. Uh, in principle, any uh, real-time operating system is, is possible. Uh, to say the rendering component is, uh, is rather simple, so it, it can run on pretty much on any, any certified real-time operating system. There's also a couple of examples of hardware that we've been working with, but also other hardware can be used quite easily as long as there's a, a separate graphics um, layer that the safety critical ones can be used. The certification activities that we are now doing uh, are ongoing for these following standards. So IEC 61508, which is for the general purpose safety standard, ISO 26262 for automotive, uh, EN 50128 for railway safety, and ISO 62304 for medical. Um, the um, tooling, if you look a bit more detail into it, uh, so this is the normal creator, also normal Qt Quick Designer. It's um, important for us not to sort of need to duplicate, uh, duplicate or make a specific version of creator, but the tooling part can hook into any version of creator and you can even update your creator. The safety certified part of the tooling is the one that then extracts uh, defined, ele defined QML elements, uh, safe text and safe picture into the parameter file. Uh, this means that it's very um, convenient to use and this, is, this has been the, one of the main uh, reasons why we wanted to create the safe render because without such tool you would often be very difficult to change uh, your safety critical UI. Now it's very easy, you can just drag and drop the safety critical elements into, in place. Uh, when you uh, have created it, you will export it from the, from the design into the safe render. Then the next day or next year or whenever, somebody from your design department says that, oh, but it looks, would look better if it's uh, on the top and on the left and the order is a bit different and uh, it's also we want to adjust this and that, the size a bit, bit like this. And, then no changes to code, you will just basically move it to another location with the designer and then you export again the new parameter file and the exact same safe render code will then display that one. The runtime is a renderer for the safety critical UI. Uh, it can render bitmaps, it can render text as long as it's baked into bitmaps. Uh, the baking of the text into bitmaps is done in the tooling side. Qt has uh, support for multiple different kinds of text and fonts, and so it's, it's really easy to do on the tooling. Uh, the renderer is fully Mistra C++ 2008 compliant, uh, well tested, uh, and as I said, it does not need to be changed uh, at all when the design changes. It, 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 you, it can basically display the um, uh, graphics uh, reading from the parameter file. The safe render uh, or the render part can also react to the uh, events coming from the main UI, for example, main UI being not no longer available. It can restart the main UI, but it is not dependent on the main UI. So even if the main UI is gone, uh, the safe render will continue to operate without any changes. Here's a, another architecture picture, a bit showing how it looks on the runtime. Um, um, so as I said, the safe render part is in the safety side, uh, no dependency to the main UI. It listens to the heartbeat messages from the main UI and it, it can control, control the main UI. Uh, when the safe renderer renders, it's put to the topmost graphics layer 
and the other parts go to layer layer or layers that are below. So even if this one then decides to draw whatever, it, it never can draw over because on the hardware side it is verified that this layer is always on top. Oh, and one more thing, uh, the, um, here's the parameter file. So basically from the tooling, you export it, the parameters, so they are here on the safe technical side, and the safe renderer will read, read the parameters um, and um, then operate based on those. Here's a sequence diagram showing a typical operation. So um, the safe renderer listens to the events coming from the system here, uh, there's a fault conditioning starting, so it, it, um, there's a fault event which will cause the safe renderer to draw a bitmap corresponding to that state. And then when the fault condition is ending, there comes a signal that the state is ending and similarly it will clear the bitmap from the screen based on this event. So it, it's really simple, it just listens to events and reacts to those. Uh, the events can come uh, either from the system, for example, via a, a communication bus, or there can be some other logic that is generating the signals, or they can be given from, from external uh, sources. Um, and um, next, we can have a look at an example on the main UI recovery. So, as I mentioned before, the safe renderer can listen to the heartbeat. Here, the heartbeat messages are coming. Uh, as defined, but when the heartbeat doesn't come at the defined time, there's a timer, timeout, uh, which will then basically uh, cause two things. Uh, it will try to restart the main UI and also uh, go to the fall state for the main UI recovery, which then, this is a big screen, will cause the textual node to be shown uh, that the main UI is tried to be recovered. Of course, this could be a picture, it could be anything, it could be no node, but this is a, it's possible because this one, uh, the safe render is still operate, fully operational, so it can, it can draw whatever is needed. So, to summarize, before we look at the uh, demo, um, the objective of functional safety is to protect people. There are multiple different standards, as well as local legislation that set the framework according to which you will then need to create your systems. Um, the complete final product is certified. You, you, need, you, you typically should use pre-certified components like a real-time operating system and hypervisor that are already certified. Uh, the safe render that is certified and the tooling, that helps you to create the system. Um, and the more you have the pre-certified parts, typically the easier it is to run the certification. But it's at the end of the day, it's uh, also possible to start start basically uh, without it, as long as you are then able to meet all the things that the standards are are, set, are requiring. Qt as a technology is well suited for this. Uh, uh, there have been multiple different kinds of certified uh, systems created with Qt, and now with the safe render it becomes much easier to do the safety critical UI parts than it was before. Uh, and, and assistance for creating these kinds of things is available for the Qt company, from the Qt company, uh, if, if needed. So ne next, let's look at the short demo. I think we are good in time for that. So I have here an, uh, with me an IMX6 quad board, similar to what you have been maybe seeing in the in our stand. Um, this is running QNX7, a real-time operating system. Uh, QNX7 is not yet um, certified, but uh, other earlier versions of QNX have been certified, and QNX is in the process of, of seeking certification for, for the QNX7 as well. Let's see. Power cable is a bit loose. No, it's there. Also had a mouse somewhere here. Let's have it booting. 
uh -huh. now it's coming, the safe renderer is there, system has power, and soon the, soon the QNX and the Qt parts are, are also booting. So this one is uh, not specifically optimized for fast boot, but it's, it's quick enough. So we have here a, a Qt application running the cluster, same as you saw in the stand. So this, this, all these things are done with Qt Quick. Uh, here is the parts that are done with the safe render, the bitmaps, and uh, it has a background that is controlled by Qt Quick. So um, let's see if it detected the mouse at startup, what should happen when I click the left mouse button is to kill the main UI process. Safe render continues to render, and there's an error node, and when the main UI is back, then the error node is taken away. The operation is restored. So, and as you can see, also the dynamic behavior is runs uninterrupted with the safety critical parts, despite what happens to the, to the main UI. So, while it's cute, is of course very reliable, it is also quite complex, and when systems are complex, some things ca can go wrong, and if somebody's life depends on it, so in that case, it's better to have a bit simpler software, which is the Qt safe render, which will take care of, of the rendering also in cases when, when there are problems with the, with the main UI. Um, that was my presentation. Thank you for listening. There's time for, for some questions if you, if you have any, and I will also be available after the talk uh, for more, more talks. And this, I think, was the last talk of the day, so there's no, no pressure. So, but if you want to ask, I'm, there's time. Yeah, just give the microphone. Uh, thank you for the presentation. So does that mean that the safe render cannot, uh, cannot show any kind of parameterized information so far? Uh, cannot show what? Parameterized information. So uh, very simple. I, I don't understand it's not exactly relevant to the case, but uh, the clock here is rendered by the main UI. Uh, yes, everything. What, if, what, what if I wanted to to show something like measured? Ah, you would. For in let, okay, the yes. Safe okay, UI. good question. Yes. So let's say that you would like to have, a, for example, an LCD display that you would have numbers uh, showing values. What? Yes. How would you would do that? Is that you create a bitmap out of each of those values, and then you show basically. As so you let's say that you have a values from one to ten, you will have ten bitmaps, and depending on which events are needed, then you will show that value. And of course, I mean, the bitmaps are small, so even if you have a hundred or thousand, it doesn't matter. So each of these values is then a bitmap. So, so I have to predefine, basically. Pre uh, yeah, basically, in your UI, you define, when you define the UI, they would be, you can use text, and basically, or numbers, and then it will be, you can use whatever text and fonts Qt has to offer. Um, or you can uh, draw the bitmap or you can use one of the pre-drawn bitmaps in it. Yeah, there's a couple of more, yeah. Um, you, you've showed in the demo what happens if the main application crashes. What happens if the safe renderer crashes? Is there um, a mechanism for restarting it? Uh, yes, it can be restarted by the watchdog, and the, they are independent, so I, I don't have a demo of it crashing, but if it would crash, which it shouldn't do, main UI would continue to operate unchanged, so there are no dependencies, so the main UI is not depending on the safe UI from, to, to operate. It would just mean that in this case, these telltales that are rendered by the safe renderer uh, would, not, and, uh, would not work, and then the system would need to uh, restart that. But will will it come up again, the safe renderer by itself? Uh, you, yes, you can. Uh, of course, yes. So the um, you can have a watchdog, for example, to to again push that back up if needed. Yes. So do you? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just bring the microphone to any. I think in the front was the first one. Okay. Uh, so I have one question here. I'm in this case, maybe the, the speed um, would also be a safety critical feature. Um, so could the safe renderer 
um, render something when the main UI fails, let's say a uh, speed in the center of the UI, where usually yes, in a, yes, it could. Yeah. Uh, it could, for example, in the in the case of of this, yeah. it could start rendering, for example, the speed ah. using again text textual or bitmap representation. It it would um, um, whether it could render the whole gates and how fast that could go is. Uh, it might be better to do it with the numerical. Yes. But I mean, it's it's then up to how quick your system can send the events and process the events. But but uh, basically, it, it, it you could even make something that is dynamic by nature. But the, the but no animations like in Q, QML you can do smooth animations and transitions. But you can do something that is uh, say, changing in, in size and location. So. Hello. Yeah. Um, do you do something to protect the integrity of the bitmaps? Maybe if the memory gets corrupted, is there yeah, any, anything? Like uh, well, they are checked for correctness. The CRC is checked for correctness. Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, then, uh, as such, I mean, if the, 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 the operating system as such is there to, to guarantee that such thing should not happen, for example, that somebody would overwrite but if the bitmap, for example, is um, uh, goes wrong in the build or, 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 or somehow when you trans transfer it, then it, it is the system knows that it is broken when the checksum is checked. Okay. Um, so when you have two CPUs, uh, I mean, is it hard to combine the two images in the frame buffer or on the display? How did you do that? Uh, you mean the layers? Yeah, the layers. And when you have two, yeah, um, asynchronously running CPUs, um, you need to combine the images somehow. Yes, uh, the, actually, the hardware side does does it, and uh, uh, this in this case, these are. Since these are simple bitmaps, we don't actually need to have, for example, OpenGL acceleration on those, so it's pretty simple. Then if you have, uh, this is not as such safety related, but if you have a system where you have multiple layers that contain 10 items, uh, some hardwares are better than others, but quite many hardwares offer the level that is needed by the safe render, so that you can, even IMAX 6 can do this, that it co uh, combines a couple of planes, but then there are hardware like, for example, the Qualcomm one that you can easily have, like I think, plus 12 or 20 or whatever layers, and they can be accelerated or non-accelerated, and it can compose. So, but it's it's basically on the on the hardware side. Of course, the hardware itself is a safety critical component. So, when you make the design, you will need to make sure that the hardware that you run has adequate certification. But quite often, the hardware guys do that uh, for their their systems. And as I mentioned, the OpenGL part does not need to be certified, so it's, it's bitmap. So there's OpenGL SC, that is a safety critical version of open source, uh, op, op, OpenGL, sorry. Uh, but this is not uh, necessary to, um, uh, to use here. Yep. And one final question, and then after that I think we will stop the session and I will be answering more questions. So as an extension to the question that was asked in the front, where you have the safety critical part can notice if the uh, non-safety critical part of the application has failed and display any in important information about it, would the reverse be possible that if the safety critical portion had any failure, would the non-safety critical part be able to recognize this and perform some type of fallback on its side? Uh, yes, it would, but typically you, what you would do is that you have another pr process or another watchdog in the safety critical side to basically watch if you, if you need to. But yes, the main UI can also uh, be aware of it, but there comes the caveat that what can it do to it. So it should not be able to, uh, for example, um, as such restart, because that could be then an incorrect restart, but it could itself try to react to the safety critical information being missing. Therefore, on the system design level, uh, to, to get the safety critical part uh, up, it's, it, you need to put it to the safety critical side of the system. Yeah, okay, thank you.
Gut, okay, thank you.